is to find out the sign of our fraction before we even accomplish the multiplication. Just go, okay, negative times a positive gives me a negative. Think about that first, then start dealing with your fractions. Are you with me on that? So here we go, okay, we know the fraction is negative. I know it's going to be 1 times 1 over 4 times 2, and that's going to give me negative 1, 8. For sure. So it still works with our, our negatives. Just make sure that we're, uh, we're keeping those signs correct. How about that one? Am I still multiplying? Yes. That's what that parenthesis says for us. We're still multiplying. Ladies and gentlemen, do you think I'm going to get a positive fraction or a negative fraction out of this? Negative. Sure. Positive times a negative is for sure a negative. On our numerator, since we've already taken care of the fact that this is going to be a negative fraction, we can't ignore that sign. We already know it's going to be negative. We just put 1 times 11. We put 2 times 28. Does anything simplify in that? 1 times 11, 2 times 28. No. No, but we should be looking, right? We should be looking for anything that simplifies that. 11 is a prime number. 1 is 1. I mean, the only thing that are going to divide those is 1. Nothing else is going to be a shared factor. So we do our multiplication the rest of the way. I know we have a negative. Don't lose that negative. Don't forget about that thing. And then we're just going to have 11 over how much? 56. Perfect. Okay, hey everybody, what are we going to have here? A positive or a negative fraction at the end? For sure, why? Okay. So since we know that, you know what we can do? We can just make sure we know that's a positive. Don't put a negative up front. That's fine. We already know our answer is going to be positive. That's what's nice about multiplication and what we're going to find out about division. So on our numerator, what we're going to write is 6 times 26, 13 times 30. And if you're thinking, where did all those signs go? Well, we already know our answer is positive. That's where those signs went. We know that a negative times a negative is a positive. Now we just have to simplify this thing. So we're writing this as one fraction. Can you see any numbers that divide a number on the top and the bottom? Six and 30. Six and 30. What number divides both those things? Six. Sure, so we're going for the biggest. So we're going to divide both 6 and 30 by the same thing and the biggest thing or the biggest factor we can find. So 6 and 30 have a common factor of 6. We'll divide 6 by 6, and that will give us? Mm. And 30 divided by 6 is? Five. Do you see anything else? 13 and 26. What divides both 13 and 26? 13. So we'll divide 13 by 13. Oops. That's not a Close. Close. Very close. <laughs> yeah, almost. 13 divided by 13 is how much? One. One. So we're dividing here. We're dividing by the number that they share that is in common. 13 divided by 13 is 1. How much is 26 divided by 13? Two. We get much quicker than multiplying those things and then simplifying. Much, much quicker. Why is it a positive? Good. Why don't you try one of these on your own, then we'll start building this up little by little.
one. Hey, our fractions up here, are we going to get a positive or a negative product? What do you think? Positive. Cool. So we're going to write this as one fraction first. We'll have 4 times 33. We'll have 11 times 16. We'll start simplifying. I'm looking for some common factors up here. So I'm looking at 11, 33. I know that 11 divides both those numbers. So I'm going to divide each of them by the same number 11. You have to have the same number here. You can't divide one by one thing and another by another thing. That wouldn't make sense. We have to divide them by the same exact number. That's what's simplifying our factors one by one. So 11 divided by 11 is 1. 33 divided by 11 is 3. Now I'm looking for anything else. I see a 4 and a 16. 4 and 16 share a common factor of 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 16 divided by 4 is? 4. I look for anything else. I've got a 1, a 3, a 1, and a 4. There's no common factors that are shared anymore. I simply have a 3 over 4. That's our answer. How many people got that one? Good for you. That's fantastic. Second. Wait a second, there's more than two fractions up there. Can you still do it? Yeah. yeah. yeah you know what? We're going to have the same exact steps. And the very first step, the reason why I have you do this step again, is we can write this, if we can write this as one fraction being multiplied together, we can simplify it. So the first step is write all three of these as one fraction. So we say, okay, well, this is just 1 times 3 times 25. This is 6 times 10 times 16. Write them as one fraction. That's fine. By the way, I, I do want to say this. Could you do them, just the first two? Yeah. And then do the next two? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely, you can do that too. I'm giving you a quick way. I'm giving you a way to do this all at once. But let's look for some numbers that divide both a, a factor on the numerator and a factor on the denominator. Can you see two numbers which share a common factor? Say that again. Three and six. six. Do you guys see the three and six? Yeah. Let's divide. What number goes into both three, three. and six? Three. So three divided by three is? One. One. Six divided by three. Two. Anything else that you see that share a common factor? Five and ten. Twenty-five and ten. What number goes into both twenty-five five. and ten? Five. How much is twenty-five divided by five? Five. five. And five. ten divided by five? Do we see anything else? No. I've got a 1, a 1, a 5, a 2, a 2, and 16. Do those share any factors that divide both the numerator on the top and the number on the top? Bottom? No. no. So we're going to go ahead, multiply the rest of it. We have 1 times 1 times 5. That gives me 5. We have 2 times 2 times 16. That's 4 times 16. 64. Well, 5 goes into both 25. And 5 goes into 10. So we're saying, what's 25 divided by 5? What's 10 divided by 5? And that's where we're getting those numbers. So we're dividing piece by piece. Little by little, we're dividing those. OK, I'd like you to try one of your own. By the way, if you would like to do this two at a time, you may. Uh, we would. Of course, right, this is one fraction. 
3 and the 6 would simplify out. Then we'd have to bring another one down and simplify from there. So you could do this in two steps if you'd like to. Okay, let's see about this thing. <laughs> so first thing, you could, you could do this two at a time. Here's what I mean by that if you want to see this as an example. You could just write this as... Are you with me? Yeah. You could just do this as 1 times 2 over 3 times 15, but then nothing simplifies anyway. So you have to add on that other fraction. So we're going to have all these numerators together, Divide all these num nine. numerators to, uh, denominators together, and then we start simplifying one by one. Do you see any numbers which share a common factor? Three and nine. One and three. Did you make it that far? Yeah. Then we go two and sixteen. Three and fifteen. Now here's what I'm talking about. You don't just stop once you make one round of this. You keep going until you have all your common factors eliminated. So here, when I'm looking at 1, 1, and 3, 1, 15, and 8, what now I'm noticing that 3 and 15 still share a common factor. 3 goes into 3, 3 also goes into 15. If you got 3 over 120 and you just left it, you don't have this problem right. Okay? Yeah. You can still simplify that. So you cannot stop until you're completely done.